again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I am very pleased and excited to share with you the spider web fillet blanket. Been working on this for quite some time and I couldn't wait to share it with you guys. I hope you like it. By the way, this video is sponsored by Lion Brand. Thank you very much, Lion Brand, for your continued support. I really appreciate it. Today, we are going to be using Lion Brand's Pound of Love in the colorway of Elephant Gray. I thought it would be perfect for today's project. This yarn, for those of you that are not familiar, I use this a lot. It is a weight of four and it is over a thousand yards. Today, I'm going to be using a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. It's a size I and we are going to have some fun. Also, I want to give a big, big thank you to the lovely testers that I have that helped me out tremendously as far as honing this pattern in and making sure that it was up to snuff. And the written pattern will also be available on my Etsy store as well. Uh, link in the description box down below. Also, of course, link to the yarn uh, that we're going to be using today. Yeah. Now, that being said, this is quite an undertaking because we have a large multiple and a large repeat. Okay, now the reason why is because there's a lot of detail going on. This gorgeous spiderweb motif that we have here actually is in one of the corners of one of the multiples. Yeah, it is, it's a bit of a, a big piece. I'll be the first to say that because the multiple is, let me just double check my little notes here, of which I have many. <laughs> oh my. Okay, so the multiple is, pardon me, it's a multiple of 64 plus an additional five. That being said, we have our work cut out for us. I'm going to try to be as thorough as well as succinct as I can. And, well, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first things first with the base chain. As I mentioned, it's a multiple of 64 chains plus an additional five. So ultimately, you can make this piece as wide or as narrow as you want to. That being said, if you only do one multiple, say you want a nice wide scarf, yes, it would work, but you wouldn't really get the full benefit of the spiderweb motifs. If you want that, you're going to want to have at least two multiples going on, which is what we're going to do today for today's piece. So because I've got two multiples, that's 64 times two, and that is 128 chains plus my additional five chains. So today we're going to be working with 133 chains. Now, for the sake of being succinct, what I'm going to do for the most part is walk you through one of the multiples, do the second multiple off camera, and show you ultimately how it's going to work out doing more than one multiple. I hope that makes sense. That being said, Get your multiples ready, 64 plus an additional five, and we can get started. Now, for the sake of clarity, I would suggest perhaps do, you know, maybe, you know, two multiples like I am here so that you can get used to the pattern, get a feel for it, and also be able to determine how many multiples you would need in the end for the, the full width of the project that you're going for. Okay, as far as gauge, tension, that sort of thing. Without further ado, let's get into it. Okay. Beginning at the beginning with row one. All right, so as I said before, I've got my two multiples. And going to start off by doing a double crochet into the fifth chain from the hook. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. And that is going to create an eyelet at the very bottom corner here. There we go. Then double crochet into the next two chains for a total of three. There we 
There we are. Okay. And then going to create six eyelets. So we're going to chain one, skip a stitch, and double crochet into the next chain six times. So got my chain one, skip a chain, double into the next, and we're going to do that six times to create six eyelets. Okay, we've got three. Four. Five. And one more. And that should make six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Okay. So after doing our six, double crochet into the next two chains. So we're going to have a total of three doubles right here. There we go. And then we're going to create seven eyelets. So we're going to chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next seven times. So chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next seven times. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. Again, double count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good. Okay. And then again, double crochet into the next two chains. So we've got another grouping of three doubles together. Okay. And then going to do another grouping of seven eyelets. So again, it's chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next seven times. So chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next seven times. Oop. There we go. That's two. three, four, five, six, and this should be seven. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, good. And then after doing that, double crochet into the next two chains for a total of three doubles. Okay, and then after doing that, we're going to do another grouping of six. And that tango out of there. Okay, so we're going to do the grouping of six. So chain one, skip a chain, double into the next six times. It's one, two, three, 
three. Four. Five. Whoa, hello. And this one should make six. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Okie doke. Then double crochet into the next two chains again. Okay, and then chain one, skip a stitch, and double into the next stitch. And that is one full multiple right there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little stitch marker right into that eyelet right there. For future reference. Totally not necessary, but I'm going to do it uh, myself. So basically, one full multiple. Start with an eyelet, then you have a grouping of three, then you have six eyelets, grouping of three, seven eyelets, grouping of three, seven eyelets, grouping of three, six eyelets, grouping of three. So for the sake of clarity, and because this is the first row, I'm going to do the second multiple with you on camera so that perhaps it will make a little bit more sense. So let's do that. Okay, so for the second multiple of row one, basically what we're doing is where we're starting here, okay, this eyelet right here is in essence the same as this beginning eyelet at the, well, beginning. So since we have our eyelet here, we're going to continue on by doing double crochets into the next two chains because after that first eyelet, we had a grouping of three, right? So going to do a double into the next two chains. If I can get my act together, that would be swell, wouldn't it? There we go. And then we need a grouping of six eyelets. So it's going to be six eyelets, seven eyelets, seven eyelets, six eyelets. So it's six, seven, seven, six, separated by groupings of three. So that being said, going to do six eyelets. So chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next six times. Okay, so got three, four, five, and six. Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, then double into the next two stitches. Okay, then we need a grouping of seven. So chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next seven times. That's two. And three. And four. Five, six, and this should make seven. Very, very important to make sure that you've got the right count, especially at the beginning. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good. 
double into the next two stitches. Okay, then we need another grouping of seven. So chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next seven times. It's one. Two, three, four. This should be five. six, and presumably seven. Okay, double count this grouping. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good. Okay, and then we need two more doubles to break up the groupings of eyelets. So two doubles. There we are and then another grouping of six. Chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next six times. It's one, two, three, four, Five and six. Double into the next two stitches. There we go. And we need to end with an eyelet. We begin with an eyelet, so we need to end with an eyelet. And at this point, you should have two chains left. So chain one, skip a stitch, and double into that last chain. And that is the end of row one. So quick recap. Okie doke. So starting with an eyelet, ending with an eyelet. So it is an eyelet, then a grouping of six eyelets, grouping of seven, grouping of seven, grouping of six. And then this is our, you know, the, the end of one of our multiples here. And then it is another grouping of six, grouping of seven, grouping of seven, and a grouping of six with our eyelet at the very, very end. Okie dokie. So what I'm going to do for subsequent rows is I'm going to do the, the first multiple on camera, the second multiple I'll do off camera for the sake of brevity, and then I'll do a full recap of how, you know, both multiples work together. Okay, so let's proceed to row two. Okay, row two. Now row two is worked a little bit differently than most of the rows because we're going to be starting row two with a total of three doubles. So going to chain up two, and that is going to count as our first double. You can chain up three if you want to, but uh, for the eyelet rows, we start by chaining up three. So that being said, I would suggest chain up two and then double into the chain space, which counts as one stitch, and then double into the next stitch. So we're starting off with a grouping of three, okay? And then from here, going to chain one, skip a stitch, and double into the next 13 stitches. So chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next 13, that's one, two, three, 
to almost had three. Okay. And basically, when working fillet, at least in this instance, whenever you reach a chain space and you double into it, it counts as a stitch. So we've already got four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 and 13. Okay, from here, chain one, skip a stitch, and then double in the next 15. So chain one, skipping a stitch, double into the next 15. It's one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Okay. Chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next 15 again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and 15. Okay. Then going to chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next 13. So that's two, three, four, five, Six, pull out a bit more yarn here. Okay, so I've got six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. 11, 12, and 
13. There we go. Okay. And then, last but not least, this is the, uh, the, the end of the multiple that we are approaching. So to finish up the multiple, going to chain one, skip a stitch, and then double into the next three stitches. Because we started with a grouping of three, we're going to end with a grouping of three. And my marker is kind of in the way, but we can manage. And there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly what I did for the remainder, the second multiple, exactly what we did here. Now, an easy way of figuring out what you need to do instead of counting is every time you have a, a solid grouping of three down here, you create an eyelet right above it. Wherever you see an eyelet, you create a solid bunch of stitches on top of it. Basically, it's the inverse of row one is what we have for row two. So it's three and then 13, then 15, 15, 13, and three. And then to continue on, it'll be another 13, 15, 15, 13, and three at the very end. And I'm going to do that off camera and I will see you shortly. Be right back. Okay, now to have further clarity to finish up row two, I need to end with three doubles. So I just did my grouping of 13 here. So I'm going to chain one, skip a stitch, and then double into the next three, which means doubling into the top of this stitch, doing a double into this chain space. And then as far as we're concerned, we can do one of two things. We can either double into the chain or double into this chain space as well. At this point, it's really not very consequential. Uh, later on, I think I'm going to make it a little bit neater, but right now I think we're fine. All right, so quick recap. We have our grouping of three, then it's 13, 15, 15, 13, 3. 13, 15, 15, 13, 3. And that's really how you just keep going in that same numeric sequence, um, you know, for however many multiples you have going on for your particular piece. But we're working with what we have here. So let's move on to row 3. Row 3. Okay, now this row begins much like many other rows where we're going to chain up two for our first double and then an additional chain for our chain one space because we're going to start off with an eyelet just like we did down here. So going to then skip a chain and double crochet into the next three stitches. So got an eyelet, grouping of three, And we shall proceed. Okay, got the eyelet, the grouping of three. Then going to chain one, skip a stitch, and double into the next nine stitches. So I got my chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next nine. So that's one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Get rid of my little tangle here, no problem. There we go. Okay, so two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Okie doke. And then going to chain one, skip a stitch, and double into the next 15. So chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next 
15 stitches. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, Fourteen and fifteen. Okay, pull out a bit more yarn here. Okay, so after doing our fifteen, going to chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next three. So chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next three. And then we are essentially doing a mirror image of what we did. So going to chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next 15. So that's one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, and 15. Okay, and then chain one, skip a stitch, and double into the next nine. So that's two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then to finish up, going to chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next three. Chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next stitch. And that is one full multiple. We've come, uh, you know, back to the beginning, figuratively speaking. So basically, it is starting with an eyelet. So you've got a grouping of three, then it's nine, 15. 3, 15, 9, 3. And then we have our eyelet again. So going to continue on with the second multiple off camera, and I will be back for a recap. See you in a bit. Okay, so a quick recap of row 3. Starting off with the eyelet, we've got a grouping of 3, then 9, 15, 3, 15, 9. Three. Then again, it's three, nine, fifteen, three, fifteen, nine, 
three and then the eyelet at the very end. So let's just keep repeating that series of numbers, you know, for however many multiples, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, I hope I'm being, you know, comprehensive enough. Um, keeping in mind, of course, that this entire pattern, the repeat, it's like 30 rows. So I'm I'm trying to be thorough, yet keep things moving along. I hope you can appreciate that. Of course, also, there are timestamps in the description box as well, down below. So let's move on to row four. Alrighty. Okay, row four. Going to start off with my chaining of two for the first double, and then an additional chain for the chain one space. Yes. And we're going to start with five doubles. We're going to skip that first stitch there, double into the next five. For the most part, this piece is going to have eyelets on the edging, for the most part. Every now and then we're going to have a block, but not too terribly often. So I've got three and four and Five. Okay, and then going to chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next five again. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. From here, chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next 15. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and 15. Now to have this grouping in the middle here expand out a little bit, going to chain one, skip a stitch, and double into the next seven. One, two, three, four, Five, six, and seven. So that's the be that's the middle. I was about to say the beginning. It's the middle of our multiple. So then, following the laws of symmetry, chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next fifteen. That's two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, and 15. Then we need two groupings of five separated by eyelets. So chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next five. Two, 
chain one, skip a stitch, and double into the next five. That's three, four, and five. And we have reached the end of our multiple. So I'm going to finish up the rest of the multiple off camera, and then I will do a recap for you. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so for the recap of row four, beginning with your eyelet here, then we've got groupings of five, five, 15, 7, 15, 5, and 5. And I moved my little stitch marker up. Then back to where we were, 5, 5, 15, 7 in the middle there. Then 15, 5, and 5. Now, since this row ends with an eyelet, I just want to show you really quick so after I did my two groupings of five here, I chained one, going to skip that chain there and double crochet into the second chain from the bottom, like so. And it creates a really nice, neat, and clean edge. Ta-da! And that, my dears, is the entirety of row four. Let us proceed on to row five. Row five. Okay, starting off as per usual, going to be chaining up three, two for the double, and then one for the chain space. And then going to skip that first stitch there, that chain space, double into the next seven stitches. So already got three going on there, four, five, six, and seven. So as you can see, this series of eyelets is going outwards. So then after that, Going to chain one, skip a stitch, and double into the next three. So chain one, skip one, double in the next three. There we are. Okay, and then chain one, skip one, double into the next 13. So chain one, skip one, that space there, double in the next 13. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and 13. Okay, then, just like we did before, this needs to continue to grow outwards. So, going to chain one, skip a stitch, and double into the next 11. So, chain one, skip one, double into the next 11. So, I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10 and 11, chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next 13 once again, because that was the center point of the multiple. So already have got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, and 13. Chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next three. Chain one, skip a stitch, and double into the next seven, because that's what we started with. Okay, and we have reached our center point. So, as per usual, I'm going to finish up this row, and then I'm going to do a recap with you. I'll see you shortly. Okay, so for the recap of row five, starting with the eyelet, we've got a grouping of seven, then three, 13, 11 for the middle, 13, three, seven just like the I would at the beginning, back to where we were with 7, 3, 13, 11, 13, 3, 7, ending with an I would. And there you go. That is how you continue on ad infinitum for row 5. All right. Row 6. Okay. As per usual, start off by chaining up three, turning your work, and skipping the first stitch, going into the next 11 stitches with doubles. This row is a little bit easier than the last one, I admit. So I already have four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Okay, and then chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next 11 again. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Okay, and then this series of eyelets is going to continue to grow outwards even still. So chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next 15. So that's two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Now, because that was the center of our multiple, following suit with symmetry, going to be doing two groupings of eleven again. So, chain one, skip a stitch, double into the next eleven. That's two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. 10 and 11, chain one, skip a stitch, and then double into the last 11 for this multiple. Like I said, a little bit more straightforward and easier <laughs> compared to the last row, but you know, you gotta deal with the rough stuff to get to the easy stuff sometimes. Fillet work, no exception. And we are at the end, so it's chain one, skip a stitch, and double into the next stitch. Back to the middle. All right. So going to finish up this row off camera and I will do a recap for you. I will see you shortly. Okay, so for the pace de resistance, the recap of row six, starting with the Iowa, we've got a grouping of 11, 11, 15, 11, 11, hmm, yeah, 11, 11, 15, 11, 11, so on and so forth for the entirety of row six, and there you have it. Alrighty, my dears, so that's going to conclude part one of the Spiderweb Filet Blanket. I want to thank you ever so much for joining me today. I hope that you're enjoying it, and if you are, please give a little thumbs up button down below. You know that I appreciate your appreciation, and I also appreciate Lion Brand for sponsoring today's video, and to my testers for helping me make this pattern possible. Thank you ever so much. And stay tuned for more, because in part two, we will continue. And until next time, you know what to do, right? I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now, everybody, and have a great day.